Welcome fellow audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I am Dan Spencer, and I'm the audio sorcerer. In today's video, we're going to continue along with my Pro Tools series and talk about five important windows that exist inside of Pro Tools. But before we get to this tutorial, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, and of course subscribe, and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, let's get to the video. So the first window we're going to talk about is the edit window. And the edit window is one of the two most important windows inside of Pro Tools. This window contains all of your audio data and all of your MIDI data. Now, as you can see, I have several uh, waveforms throughout here, which is actually my audio data. And I don't have any MIDI data in here because I actually converted all of my instrument tracks that contain virtual synths over to audio. And that's something you definitely want to do when you're done with the session because it makes it a lot easier to pass sessions along to, um, you know, per se, a mix engineer who may or may not have your uh, virtual instrument. So that's something you definitely want to do at the end of all your sessions. Now, this is going to be the first window that appears in Pro Tools when you open a new session. Now, of course, it's going to be empty because you won't have any tracks in it yet. Now, the way I would describe this window beyond what I've said so far is on the left-hand side, uh, you have your track information. And then in the center, you have your timeline, which contains your track data. Now, we can add extra information to these track tabs over here by going up to the View tab and then going down to Edit Window Views. And then you can add any of this stuff here. Now, if you add any of this, it's going to appear over in this middle section here. Um, for me, I just like to have my five first uh, inserts and then my five first sends here. Now, if you go away from this window, the way that you get back to it is you go up to the uh, window tab up here and then you click on edit and it'll take you right back to it. Now, there's also another way to do it with a keyboard shortcut and that's using the uh, control plus sign or on a Mac, the command plus sign. Um, you can look at it as plus or equals. Um, if you look up in the windows tab up here, it basically tells you what the shortcut key is right there. So this will basically toggle you between the mix and edit window, which we're going to talk about next. So let's get to the mix window. So this is the mix window, and this is the other most important window inside of Pro Tools. And as you can see, it looks like a mixing console, which makes sense. Uh, if you start at the top, you have your inserts, then down to your sends, then your IO, down to your panning, solo and mute, and then it ends with your fader here, and then your meter. Now the information that exists per channel can also be edited just like we did in the edit window. If we go up to the view tab up here, and then we click on the mix window views, we can add in all these different options here. Now again, I'm kind of boring and like to leave it pretty simplistic. So I just have my first five inserts and my first five cents. Now, another reason I do that is because I'm using a Slate Raven, and that's all that allows for. If I was to add in more information here, it would actually throw my faders all out of whack. Um, just for fun, I'll show you what the Slate uh, faders look like. So that's what the Raven faders look like, going back between, back and forth. Uh, that's off topic, so uh, moving on. So on top of that, we can also meter all of the levels of our channels, and that's done with the meters here. Now this little meter next to it is basically the gain reduction for a compressor if you have it on a channel. So I'm actually gonna play a little bit of this track here and you can actually see all the lights going on and off. Okay, so if you looked at some of the clean guitar tracks here and the acoustic tracks here, you saw that there was some uh, game reductioning happening on the compressor. So that's a pretty good example where you can see that at. Now, while we're also in this window, I do want to mention about the pans here, that there are mono tracks and then there are stereo tracks. That's why you see some tracks that have two pan pots here and then some that just have one. So that's the difference there. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the IO section here. Now, I know I'm going a little bit out of order, but I think this is important to mention. Uh, so your input section is here, and if I click on the little arrow here and I go down to interface, this is where I would find whatever audio interface that I'm using on my computer to record with. I have an eight channel interface, so I basically have eight inputs on it. So if you had a microphone and you get plugged into channel one, you would select this one here, and then you'd be able to record your microphone. Now down here is the output section, and you can see that I have this routed to the acoustic bus, which is actually this bus right here. 
and then this goes to my music mix. So I kind of create this long chain of events that happen to get the signal from the beginning to the end. And if we look in here, you'll see that I'm using a bus and I have several buses in here, but this is, you know, how you could do routing. If you wanted to get it out to your speakers and not go through all this extra routing, you would go to output and then this would usually show your audio interfaces outputs. And usually you're using output one and two as your main left and right. So that's you to select here. So that's pretty much all I wanna talk about within this window here. I mean, there's some other things like your record, your input monitoring, solo mute, some, some pretty basic things. Uh, so I wanna move on from this window and let's go to the uh, MIDI editor. So the third window that we're gonna talk about is the MIDI editor. And it's best to work with the MIDI editor while you're in the edit window. And that'll make more sense as we go along. So let's do control plus on your keyboard. That'll take us back to the edit window here. And as mentioned before, we don't have any instrument or MIDI tracks in the session. So we're gonna to need to create one so you can actually see the MIDI editor. So under drum bus here, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna do control shift N on my keyboard. Launches my new tracks window here. We're just gonna do a stereo instrument track. Cool, so we got our stereo instrument track here. Now, we need to create some data first. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable this for record. I'm just gonna click somewhere here in the timeline and I'm just gonna hit record. Okay, so you see this just recorded some blank data and that's all we need to work with here. So what you can do is you can actually double click this data and it launches your MIDI editor right there. So you can actually take your pencil tool you can write in some notes here. Uh, you could do a lot in this window. Now, the fact that you could do a lot in this window, I wanna save this for another tutorial because there is so much stuff to it. There's things from you know writing in notes. You can record these notes in from a MIDI keyboard, like actually play it like you're playing a piano. Uh, you have velocity down here, which basically makes how loud or soft a note is. You have all your different editing stuff in here from grid slip to shovel to spot. You have your different um, kind of editing, I guess you would say tools. Uh, I like to use on the smart tool here that uh, gives me some extra features. Uh, so there, there is a lot to this window and I definitely want to save it for another tutorial. So with that being said, let's get to our fourth window, which is the task manager. Now the fourth window we're gonna talk about is the task manager. Now this window isn't super important and it's not all that useful, but you need to know about it. And uh, how you access this window is you go up to the Windows tab here, and then you go down to Task Manager, or of course you could do Alt Plus on your keyboard. So let's launch this here. And right now this is blank because I have no tasks going on. Um, it basically is going to show background task. And the manual actually describes this as file copies, searches, indexing, and file creation. And of course, there's some other things that uh, this also shows. Now, I see this the most when I'm opening very old sessions that I had rendered Elastic Audio files in. And usually what happens is when I'm converting from different versions of Pro Tools, like older ones to new ones, it needs to re-render those Elastic Audio files. So when that's happening, uh, it's actually showing them doing them one by one in this window. And that's my probably my most experience with the Task Manager window. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Again, it's it's good to know and it's important to know, but you're not going to use it that much. So let's move on to our last window, which is the memory locations window. So the last window that we're going to talk about is the memory locations window. And to open that up, we need to go to the Windows tab. We need to go down to memory locations, or you can do control five, and that's actually numeric five because it's in a square. So let's open that up. As you can see in my memory locations window, I have several locations that I created. And these are pretty standard across most of my songs, verse one, chorus one, verse two, chorus two, etc. cetera. Um, it works across the board for all my songs. And the reason I create these markers, as I call them, uh, is so I can jump to them quickly and not have to use the scroll bar across the bottom to try to find it in this timeline. So if I was to hit chorus two, I'm right at chorus two. I hit verse two, I'm right at verse two. So that you know makes working within Pro Tools so much easier and so much quicker. Now, of course, to use this, you need to know how to create a memory location or a marker first. And the way you do that is you just click on your timeline here at the top, and then you hit the Enter key on your numeric keypad 
on your keyboard and it brings up the new memory location window. You just gotta give it a name and then you hit enter. So we'll just call it location nine for this example. Uh, so we'll hit okay. So you see that I got a location number nine that shows up in here. And the numbers here are actually the order in which these are created, not the order that they are in the song. That would be kind of listed under the name here. This goes in order of where they're actually located on your timeline. So that's pretty much all there is to memory locations. So in closing, there are more windows in Pro Tools, but I feel like these are the five most important ones that you need to know. And I really hope you guys liked this video. So if you did, give it a thumbs up. I make sure you guys subscribe. And of course, hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, I will see you guys later and peace out.